The McDougal diet is based on starch with the addition of fruits and vegetables. The McDougal program avoids all animal products and all free oils. That's the program. Starch-based diet. What are starches? Starches are rice, corn, potatoes, sweet potatoes, breads and pastas. There are thousands of different starches out there. Some we use today, many we used in the past. As a matter of fact, all large successful populations of people have obtained the bulk of their calories through from starch. Throughout all of verifiable human history, there's only been a, a few people who've lived on the extremes of the environment that have followed otherwise, like the Inuit Eskimo, because of their environment, their frigid environment. You know, they've got to eat mammals and fish. That's all that's available. Or there are a few tribes in Africa and in South America that have decided what they're going to do is they're going to go on a diet that's heavy in meat and milk. But, but you know, we're talking about a few thousand people. That's it. Otherwise, the uh, 100 billion people who've walked on this planet have lived on various starches with the addition of fruits and vegetables. It's only been in the last 50 to 150 years that we've seen a change in mass from just a very few people eating rich foods to a planet now today in 2023 where half the world's population eats like Americans, like kings and queens. You know, they eat other than a starch-based diet, they eat a meal plan designed around animal foods. What's for dinner? Turkey. What's for dinner? Steaks. What's for dinner? You know, cheese souffle, whatever. Uh, that's the way we think of things, whereas what we should do is having people say, what's for dinner? Beans. That's what, that's what they said in Central America and in Mexico for, you know, thousands of years. These are the people that are known as the people of the corn, the Aztecs and the Mayans. They're living in corn. You know, look at other populations like the Incas in, in South America who live in the Andes. You know, they have somewhere between 400 and 600 different species of potatoes. They live on potatoes. What's for dinner? Potatoes. How about in the breadbasket of the world? What do, you, what do you think is answered to the call for dinner in the breadbasket of the world? I would guess pastas and breads, wouldn't you? And how about in Asia? What, what, when, when the family asks, okay, mom, what's for dinner? Or dad, what's for dinner? What do they answer? A starch. You know, up until 1980, this is well documented. Up until 1980, 90% of the diet of populations in Asia, particularly the Chinese have been studied thoroughly, 90% of their food came from rice. It's the human diet, a starch-based diet with fruits and vegetables. Where, where people get fooled is they get fooled because the human being is a survivor. You know, we could put up with two packs of cigarettes a day, a third of a bottle of whiskey every day, and uh, live on a diet of uh, hot dogs wrapped in bacon and cheese. It's, it's amazing what this body is, and we get fooled. Didn't kill me today. <laughs> Maybe I'll have another cigarette tomorrow. Didn't kill me last week. I'll have another drink today. You know, it hasn't killed me uh, since my last birthday. Well, maybe I'll have another cheeseburger, you know, dripped in bacon juice. You, know, you think you get full. If, if these particular habits uh, killed you right away, you'd never do it, right? One puff of a cigarette, you ended on a, up on a respirator. No, I don't smoke. A drink and you end up uh, falling down, killing yourself. You'd, that's the last drink you'd have. But it takes it takes decades to kill you from, from the wrong food, from food poisoning which is what I call, I call it food poisoning, which has been one of the really uh, important changes in the way I communicate this, this message. I'll tell you, there are been a couple of basic changes. One is I've tried to define it so everybody can understand it. And so I've talked about in terms of food poisoning. The two categories of food poison are animal products. In other words, anything from an animal, a secretion, a part of their body, etc. Anything from an animal is uh, a food poison. And the other thing is free oils are food poisons. And then you say to yourself, well, what's left to eat? I mean, that's all I eat. There's nothing else to eat. What's left to eat is starch, just like we talked about. Starch is the addition of fruits and vegetables. So I've tried to make it simple. Again, so people can understand and they can make definite changes. You got to sit around, well, let's see, should, should I, should I uh, skim the milk or should I uh, take the chicken, the skin off the chicken or, the, the, you know, if you get into so many silly rules, starch-based diet and avoid the oil. Avoid the animals. That's basically what you need to do. So that was, that was one of the uh, paramount things that I uh, came about to understand. The other thing that I came to a conclusion, that's from my professional life as far as, and also my personal life, is that these substances that end up hurting us 
have an attraction. Otherwise, what we, why would we do it if it didn't have an attraction? And as a result of it having an attraction, people become highly habituated and often addicted to these behaviors. Some people talk about food as an addiction. I think it's a, a, a lot of habit that has been developed, but whatever you want to call it, I don't care. Certainly, alcohol and heroin and you know tobacco, are there. there are definitely addictions. Well, what I, I've come to the conclusion is, is if you really, really want to change, you know, it's fine, you can practice for a while, but you're really expecting to get off those diabetic medications, to get yourself out of heart, heart surgery, give you your best chance of surviving breast cancer, your best chance of getting out of a wheelchair and not suffering from terrible arthritis. When you get to that point, then you must act like other people do in terms of changing their behavior. You're not an exception. In all my years, all my years of practice, the only way I've ever seen people quit smoking is to quit. I've never seen anybody quit by cutting down. Same thing with an alcoholic. You don't switch by, you don't, you don't cure your problem by switching to beer and wine. You got to quit. Heroin, you got to quit. You know what? It's the same thing with the food for a good share of people. And that is that if, unless they do it 100%, it's too hard to deal with. You open that refrigerator and there's that piece of cheesecake sitting there looking at you. You got to be in a position to, to say no, just say no. Just like Nancy Reagan, Nancy Reagan, she was, First Lady, what did, she, what did she tell the youth of America? She didn't tell them to you know, cut down on your cocaine or your heroin or your opioids. She didn't tell them that, did she? She said, just say no. So, you know, I've made this uh, a goal of people is that, uh, you know, if you're ready for the, the cure, the best you could possibly get, you need to do it 100%. And then I would say the, the, the third big effort and big, big change in my practice is uh, try to educate people. How do, how do you get them to, to come to the information and to incorporate it in their lives? And, you know, I started out in writing books and magazine articles and then went on to TV and radio. I had my own radio show for 15 out of 21 years all over the West Coast state of California. So, you know, those all those things worked, you know, radio, TV, books and so on. But education is key. And that's why I've come of age. I, I could never do the things that I do today if it wasn't for technology like Zoom and to be able to make recordings that are you know, really quite professional and to talk to a group of a thousand people at like one time, I have come of age. Technology is finally giving me the opportunity to do what I do best, which is to communicate, to, to share the story. And if I spend you know, my, the rest of my years doing anything, if I stay productive, it'll be becoming a better communicator to more effectively get this life-saving message across to people. Man, I'm getting better at it. Who knows what's going to happen over the next decade or two.